Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I am in a different location today, can you see? Today I have the pleasure of filming at my favorite secondhand bookstore, Old Goat Books. You've definitely heard me mention this store before if you've been following me for a while because a lot of the books in my hauls come from here. So the staff here were kind enough to invite me to film basically anything I wanted in here. What we decided on was I'm going to be giving you some classic fantasy recommendations based on the things that you like in literature right now. So I've chosen seven, I think, seven classic fantasy authors, meaning from like the 70s, 80s, early 90s, that I think you guys will like if you like certain tropes or writing styles or authors that are popular today. I'm not gonna be talking about the big ones that you already know. We're not gonna be talking about Game of Thrones or Wheel of Time or Name of the Wind or anything like that. We're gonna be talking about some that hopefully you've never heard of so you can experience something brand new. The first author on our list today is Tad Williams. Tad Williams first stood out to me as someone who had never really heard of him before because of the stunning cover art on these Daw mass market paperback editions of his trilogy, Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn. The cover art for his books is done by Michael Whalen, who is a prolific cover illustrator that you've definitely seen on a lot of um, 80s and early 90s classic fantasy. Look at this, it's got a little window. Even though Tad Williams has written a number of fantasy series and trilogies, Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn is his biggest one. It starts with the Dragonbone Chair, which is the one I was just showing with the little window in the front. This is the series I started collecting, and if you've been following my saga of thrift stores and classic fantasy, you'll know I've been looking for Stone of Farewell for a very long time, and I finally found it here at Old Goat Books. Ow, I just punched that bookshelf. So even though I purchased this copy for myself, they actually have another one. If you are a fan of authors like James Islington and the sort of zero to hero main character arc without just like lots of training montages or like the Mary Sue character trope, if you like a well-rounded, morally good protagonist, you will like Tide Williams. Next up on our list, we have Mercedes Lackey. Have you heard of her? Mercedes Lackey is one of the OG female fantasy writers. She was extremely prolific in the 80s and has written over 140 books to my knowledge. Her longest running series is called Valdemar, but it is made up of little trilogies in the middle. As far as where to start with Mercedes Lackey and the Valdemar series, you can definitely start with The Last Herald Mage. That is what chronologically comes first in the series, but what she actually wrote first was Queen, The Queen's Arrows, is what it's called. Another Daw alumni, alumnus, and Old Goat Books has an enormous collection of Mercedes Lackey. Her writing is often compared to Robert Jordan. She's got a lot of very complex and varying magic systems as well as politics, different cultures and societies. And she was one of the first authors to really feature LGBTQIA rep in her books with a lesbian couple <laughs> featured in one of the, her early works. And can I just say that while not one of the better series that she's written, Owl Sight has my favorite covers because we got big birds. Momentarily breaking away from Daw, although don't worry, we will be coming back. We've got a Tor Fantasy alumnus in L.E. Modisette Jr. If you're looking for crisp, hardcore, logical fantasy, <laughs> this is the guy for you. Modisette's books are packed with world building and he pays a lot of attention to the economy and ecology of the worlds he builds, the politics, the societal structures, law enforcement. It can be definitely heavy, but if that's the sort of thing you're into, then this is an amazing place to start. He's even included some portal fantasy in his works. The best place to start with him though is the Magic of Recluse. There we go, Magic of Recluse series. That is the main world that he has created, and a lot of his trilogies later on do revisit the locations, but you really want to start there to sort of get that heavy world building into your brain so you can continue without being confused. God, I love that 80s style. The craziest thing just happened. I was talking about the James Islington and Tad Williams comparison and a customer that I didn't know was here because I've been pausing while their customers were here. He like popped his head around the bookshelf and was like, um, I actually just started reading James Islington's new book and so like, who should I read if I like him? And I was like, Tad Williams. And he picked it up. Hey, bud. 
the Todd Williams books I was talking about. So, wow, it's already working. Yeah. Next up on our list is Jennifer Robertson. We're back to Daw, I told you. Jennifer Robertson, Robertson? I don't know how to pronounce it. But she's one of our earliest examples of, um, I was gonna say modern feminism, but that's not true. It's, it's very early feminism in classic fantasy. Some of it's a little cringy, but she was doing her best. Her work consists of very lyrical, kind of purpley prose. Um, also sort of compared to Robert Jordan. You can also find religious themes in a lot of her books and holy wars and really cool swords. Now her first series is Shape Changers, and I do think it's a great series, but my preferred place to start is Sword Dancer. Now what I'm holding here in my hands is bind-ups of books three, four, and five, and six of Sword Dancer. There is also a first volume that you can get. I think I'm actually gonna buy these because I don't own them, so I'm gonna pick these up today. <laughs> but Sword Dancer is great. Recently I've been really gravitating towards those books that include you know, swords that are essentially a character in the book, and we definitely have that in this series here. Not quite as involved as like in Brandon Sanderson's work or Jay Kristoff or Gareth Hanrahan, but we definitely have some badass sword play. Now, I'm not even gonna stop filming, so we can just turn right around to show my next author, who's Raymond D. Feist. Again, if you've been following the saga, <laughs> I've been trying to complete it two different Feist trilogies. I think I bought the first one here, but I did complete it at Second Look Books. I was working on the Dark War Saga. He's got me here with no dust jacket, that's okay. He's more known for his Demon War Saga though, which is, this is the second book of that here. It's got a protective cover on it, it's not actually that shiny. They take good care of their books here, my old coat books. Feist's writing is for fans of classic, classic fantasy. Like if you're looking for books that give off D and D energy. You want to read Raymond E. Feist, or if you're a fan of Tolkien as well. Obviously, Tolkien's on a whole other level. But we've got elves, we've got dwarves, we've got wizards, we've got magic, we've got sword and sorcery, we've got long journeys and adventures. If you want to pick up Raymond E. Feist's books, the best place to start is with his Rift War saga. That's sort of where it all begins, and then you can continue on with from there. The sagas are broken down into trilogies that you can pick up, and there are pretty quick reads. Oh, I like this minimalist cover. Moving okay. right along. I'm just, I'm just bringing these with me. We'll just keep filming. Ah. I've brought us over to the horror section. Not because we're necessarily going to talk about any horror books, but there are two classics that get shelved as horror, despite the fact that that's questionable. Last time I was in here, they actually had the book that I was going to show off, but you know we have to talk about Anne Rice. Another window thing. Why don't, can we bring that back? Can we bring back windows in books, please? Anne Rice is the very well-known author of Interview with the Vampire. I've heard a lot of people talking about how, you know, we, we were going through a very long period of vampires being love interests and <laughs> not scary and we're finally with Jay Kristoff coming back into vampires as monsters so if you're into Jay Kristoff or the vampires as actual scary monsters phenomenon <laughs> check out Anne Rice she's one of the first to do it interview with the vampire is the one you want to start with but then you can get into the rest of the Vampire Chronicles. And then she's got an entire witch-based series as well. The last author on my list needs no introduction. I know I was like, oh, we're not gonna talk about any of the big authors that you've already heard of. And now I'm gonna go completely back on my word and talk about Stephen King. But the reason I'm talking about Stephen King is because I want to tell you right now to read The Dark Tower. Look at this copy of the first book. If you've never heard of The Dark Tower, uh, don't watch the movie. It's awful. <laughs> the Dark Tower is an epic fantasy western sci-fi spanning, I think, 13 books. Ryan, how many books are in The Dark Tower? Seven. Seven. I don't know where I got 13 from. <laughs> Wheel of Time. Stop thinking about Wheel of Time. The Dark Tower is Stephen King's magnum opus, and if you are a fan of his more traditional horror, like The Shining and It, etc., etc., you will find, um, the, 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 I don't know what, what I can say without giving stuff away. <laughs> People know. It's a connected universe. Oh, this is more Michael Whalen. But if you just want some good classic fantasy from a familiar author like Stephen King, you gotta go with it. The Gunslinger is a bit slow, I will admit, 
I was not the biggest fan of the gunslinger. But look, she's so short. Get through this and then it really takes off and is well worth a read. And that's it. Those are seven classic fantasy authors I want you to check out right now. I'm gonna explore the store a little bit more and just point out some bonus authors that I didn't wanna like fit into the video, but I think are still well worth reading if you've never heard of them. It's also always good to support your local indie store, support booksellers, and support authors. Old Goat Books specifically hold open bike poetry nights and other bookish events for the community. So if you are ever in Waterloo, Ontario, um, check it out here. I'll link their Instagram um, and other social medias below so that you can come take a look. This is just on vibes alone. Come check it out here. Thank you so much again to Old Goat Books for letting me film here, for inviting me to film here, and for just being an all-around amazing store. Before I go though, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell icon so you know when I upload new videos. I upload two days a week plus what to read Wednesday. I love you guys. Goodbye. I should go pay for these books. I'm not going to walk out with them. Let's go.